Today on Community Cooking, we have guest chef Jill Reed in the kitchen to show us how to put together a fabulous tea party menu. First, it's creamy egg and cucumber sandwiches, curry chicken salad with pistachios, and a roast beef with creme fraiche sandwich, and for dessert, a lemony canapé with honey nut cream cheese and berries. We're cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community, so grab a seat, get comfortable. We've got another great menu for you. This is your Community Cooking. Hello and welcome to Community Cooking. I'm your host, Kirk Lines. In our kitchen today is a familiar face. You've been here before. This is Jill Reed. Hi, nice to be back. Thank you. N nice to have you back. I, I'm, first of all, I'm excited because <laughs> I, I, I do enjoy a traditional English tea. I think it's a pretty awesome, civilized I sort of it. ritual uh, built around food and tea and in the middle of the afternoon. Uh, what inspired you to bring that to us? Well, I've done tea parties for baby showers and bridal showers and just to have tea parties at my house and with friends. I just love it. I'm a tea drinker at home. We're going to do the creamy egg with cucumber and mint. Okay. This is actually, I went to tea at the Savoy in London and they do a sandwich. It's a slice of cucumber with the egg and mint on it. This, I kind of combine it all together. So it's a little spin on that. Sounds delicious. Well, tell me what, what, what goes into that. We've got our hard boiled eggs. There's the mint and the cucumber, and then a little creme fraiche and salt and pepper, and that's it for this one. So everything in the title of the sandwich. <laughs> everything in the title of the sandwich. Those are our sandwich. ingredients. Okay, right. and bread. And then, and then bread, obviously. Okay, great. That. All right, so. so where do we get started here? Well, first thing we want to do is we want to kind of rough chop our eggs. And these, we're going to mix them around a little bit in there with the other stuff so they don't okay. have to be perfect, perfect. Another convenience thing some grocery stores now have very robust salad bars. You can skip boiling your own eggs and just buy. Pick them up, pick them up pre-boiled. Pre right, even not on the salad bar in the in the section by the eggs. There's. Yes, I have I have absolutely seen that. So, like I said, the yolks are gonna do their thing and help make it a little creamy. We just now, I like the that. idea of this combination. I mean, I'm, I'm a big egg salad fan. I love egg salad. Uh, I write on, uh, just a delicious, delicious concoction. But um, the idea of cucumbers and creme fraiche and mint, I, 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 I find it highly interesting and, I, and I, see it, I, I see it working. It goes nice with the tea. It makes the creme fraiche, makes it a little more, I think, luxurious than a mayonnaise-based. Right dressing on there. Right. And it's pretty simple. The creme fraiche is a l similar to sour cream, but it's not as thick and more, more not as sour. Not as sour, yeah. Right. Much more refined. Yeah, it's a little milder. And it's going to give a nice... And you, you know, you could probably, uh, if, if you didn't, if you weren't a fan of mint, maybe a little dill. You right? could use dill, definitely. Kay. I think the mint... Goes nicely with the tea. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I see that. And fittingly, you are using an English cucumber. I am using an English cucumber. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be right not to. So, I like to peel them. You don't have to if you like a little more color in there. Yeah, domestic. You have to peel these. Yes. Can go either way, right? So we're just gonna. I want a smaller knife for that. I don't want to cut my. You know, we don't want you to do that either. You've got to do a tea party. So so uh, you said you're a, a tea drinker at home. Is, yes. that, is that a daily thing for you? I have a cup of tea in the morning uh, when I'm getting ready for work. I don't sit down and make a whole pot of tea okay. every day. So you're not a coffee drinker then? I don't drink coffee at home. I've, I'll drink coffee sometimes when I'm out or have a cup of coffee at work, but... I don't have a coffee maker at home. I don't keep coffee at home. And what kind of uh, what kind of teas are you partial to? Oh, uh, my mother-in-law introduced me to PG Tips, which, as the package says, is the number one tea in England. Yeah, that's sort of the go-to. <laughs> it's a just a good solid black tea, but I really like Earl Grey a lot. I like uh, something with a little bergamot. You know what's funny is, for the longest time. I, I literally had an aversion to Earl Grey tea. 
Like I would smell it and I just thought it was it was awful. Like I didn't like it. To me, it, it's it just had an off-putting smell to it. And one day I I walk into work and someone's drinking it and I was like I flip I, I switch flipped and all of a sudden I was like you know that smells really good I'm gonna make myself a cup of Earl Grey and ever since then I get it uh, I'm I'm reformed <laughs> you know I, I I really do enjoy Earl Grey. There are some really good French teas that I like also, but. They're a little harder to come by around here. So. Right, right. All right, so we have our eggs in there, our cucumbers in there. Okay. We're going to do the mint. a little mint. And again, this is just a rough chop. And you don't need too much. This is pretty strong. You don't want to uh, overtake everything right. else. Okay. Let's get the stem out of there. I, just, I, I don't think mint and egg is a combination that I have, have had. It. With the cucumber, well, kind of, yeah, kind of brings sure. it all together. Right, I get, I get it though. I get it, and, and it's that fattiness, that creaminess that you you sort of right. want, you know, to accompany that that tea. Yeah, and the mint just kind of cuts through that, gives it a little freshness, a little kind of hmm, what's in there? Yeah, yeah, I just I just think that this is such a a refined sort of ritual you know the afternoon tea I, I think it's great to take that pause in the middle of the afternoon and enjoy something like this I think it's I think it's really kind of cool it is it's just relaxing and kind of decadent and you know for sure for sure a little salt a little, little salt, pepper a little pepper not too much and then the creme fraiche there you go going to bring it all together and then just give it a mix. Give it a mix and we'll uh, I love it. kind of mash the egg up in there a little bit. So the, the, the yolks become a part of the right. creaminess. The yolks will help combine. Just like combine. an egg salad. Right. It's just a... I like this. I like where this is going. Fancy egg salad. I, I think it's going in a really nice direction. I can see myself making myself a regular sandwich with this. Now, <laughs> I like this on wheat, but... You know, I'm gonna follow your lead today. We're not gonna reinvent <laughs> the wheel here. Like I'm gonna whatever fits your. No, no, no. You, we're, look, we're gonna follow your lead and 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 do it how you would do it. All right, that's mixed pretty good. It's Beautiful. a little chunky, All right. but everything's mixed in there pretty good. Okay. Excellent. You wanna put a couple of these together? Let's do it. All right. So some wheat, wheat bread. bread. All right. And you notice. I'm gonna move this out of the way real quick. We have soft butter. Some good burr. And you want to butter the inside of the bread, and the butter is going to kind of create the, like a moisture barrier. You know, I love, I love that you're doing this. Keeps Dude. your sandwich from getting soggy, especially it, if you're making them ahead. This is such a counterintuitive thing. You think it would be the opposite. You think it, it would, you know what I mean? But it's not. You're absolutely right. It does create a, a, a barrier. Uh, for the bread so that you're not because you typically you're making like plates of these things right so they are sitting, sitting for, for a, a little while a little while right 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 and um, if you didn't protect them like this they would absolutely get mushy excellent what a great call all right and then what I do is I just will use this just kind of don't even go all the way to the edge of oh, the bread because we're going to cut the crust off. Yeah, come on. This is proper, right? So just a not too chunky layer, not too thick. You just want to get a right. like a nice little I I got it. layer on there. Yeah. Push that down. Right. And then going to remove I got a little those. bit of egg in the pistachio. I'm going to sneak a bite if no one saw that. And I know some people make cute little frilly tea sandwiches, and they're teeny tiny, and you mm -hmm. get like two bites. I don't make a lot of tea sandwiches, but I make a good size. So you get, you know, there's like half of this for each person and half of the next one. So basically everybody gets kind of a half a sandwich okay. in their portion versus... Uh, yeah, that's a nice size, right. right. So you can... Beautiful. So it can be lunch. May I borrow a knife? Yes, you may. So it can be lunch versus uh, that afternoon tea if you want to make it lunch. True. Okay. 
I wonder why the, the, the crusts are cut off. Any, any, any I theory think it's on just that? aesthetic. I think it just looks prettier and tidier. And then, it, and, and then it's just also just an easier bite, maybe? Maybe. And then we just go diagonal. Yep. All right. You can cut them into fingers or. Yeah, we, you could you cut know, them again however. here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or just, you know. Beautiful. Trips. All right. Shall we? So these are our. All right. Egg. So one sandwich down. Uh, let me get a, actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little garbage bowl here. I was going to say, I can just put them right here. And that way we can throw our... Scraps? Our crusts, our scraps, yeah. All right. There we go. So Excellent. On to the next. Beautiful. Okay. I'll get rid of this for you as well. Thank you. You good? You need a paper towel or anything? No, I'm good. I've got some down here. All right. And again, these are, you don't have to eat these sandwiches for tea. You can eat these sandwiches yeah anytime i don't think i need tea to eat this or have a have a, a lettuce cup sandwich with the chicken in it is good and if you didn't have the curry paste you could always use a little curry powder in you there could would use, be nice too yep, little curry powder a little madras curry powder would be good I, I i use that a lot with uh with actually with tuna sometimes i'll put some curry powder in my tuna salad that sounds good yeah and and some sort of like either either a sunflower seed or pistachio uh, a little bit of cilantro, and then instead of like celery and tuna salad, a little bit of apple. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's a real nice flavor profile as well. I so it's sort of borrowing the same thing. You got the sweet, you got the crunchy, you know. Right. Yeah, I do apple sometimes in chicken salad, but I haven't tried it in tuna. I'll have to yeah, it's give nice. that a try. Can I get the carrots in here? The carrots can go in. All of this? Yeah. Okay. That's uh, one carrot grated. Peeled and grated. Right? Yes, okay. peeled and grated. <coughs> Always. Yeah, right? All right, we're going to put in some of these. Beautiful. Delicious pistachios. That can all go in if you want to. Okay, get here, I got that for bread. you. And I will give you, this probably goes in as well, right? You bet. Okay, so all the honey. Honey and the red curry. And then, and then this is a plain, non fat Greek yogurt. Nice. So it's going to have a little tartness to it. I like that though, you know, with the curry and the yogurt and as the opposed to the eggy. And you know, the mayo is eggy. Right. You know, and we've got eggy sitting right over here. Uh, and the nuts are sweet and the carrot is sweet, so, so the yogurt, the yogurt being really, a little tart really is okay. makes sense to me here. Yeah, I like that. And that's a great move. So okay. these are nice. And, and what bread do you use with this? Uh, I think I'm going to put these. I brought white and wheat and sourdough. I looked for potato bread and... The store did not have any potato bread, but again, whatever. At the end of the day, you could probably use what you like, Whatever right? bread you like, exactly. This would probably even be really good on like a raisin bread, just up the sweetness Ooh, a little yeah. more if you wanted to. Yeah, um, I like that idea too. I should give this a little, a little seasoning. salt and pepper and then finish that off. Yeah, I like the idea of that curry paste and the honey. That's a great move. And I like curry and tea and I think it I think again it goes nice the well and it makes because I drink my tea with sugar and milk so and a lot of Indian cooking in England yes a lot of curry flavors really good so yeah I mean, even the English have adopted the curry you know right. in their own food all right and are we going in with the butter again yep absolutely right same thing with the butter so okay. we get our little crust to crust barrier. is a must And I uh, could add a little cilantro to that if you wanted to add a little more herb flavor. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all pretty versatile. Sure. I know we have a third sandwich coming, so I don't want to burn all this butter. <laughs> here. <laughs> that would be bad. Then we're gonna have soggy tea sandwiches. But I think we're gonna have enough here. Let's see. All right. I'm borrow some. Get Spoon. Oh, look at this little spoon here. I know. Do you want a bigger spoon? No. I can get you a bigger spoon. Make this work. And again, this is there's chicken in there, but there's a lot of other stuff in there too, so it's not you don't feel like you're getting a huge protein bomb when you're 
No. Eating no. a sandwich. And, and you're not, and once again, we're, we're sort of just, we're not going completely edge to edge. Right, and not too thick. Not too thick. Because you want to be a little dainty when you're having tea. You don't, <laughs> you don't want it to all I've got a, I've got fall a, out into your lap. Do I have to stick my pinky out when I eat it? <laughs> I'll leave that up to <laughs> you. <and laughs> it's between you and the queen. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, and there we're going to cut those off again. All right. Now this, we have a little extra trick to these sandwiches. Okay. Do tell. We're going to use just a little extra butter on one of the short sides. Okay. So you can pick whichever short side you want. All right. And butter Oops. that a little bit. I tore mine a little bit on that side. That's right. We'll still eat it. And then I have some ground uh, pistachios that I that I ground up in my mini food processor. Okay. And just kind of dip the one edge in that, so you get a little extra, uh, ha, ha, ha. even more pistachio crunch and and nutty flavor in there. Okay, that's not going to be bad. And then when you serve them, you stand them up. You can see how pretty those oh, are. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's a great idea. That is a great idea. All right, well, we're gonna finish these up here and get cleaned up. We've got another sandwich to make on the other side as well as a dessert for our tea party menu. Yes. So we're gonna do that. Do not go away, we will be right back. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. Welcome back, I am in the kitchen with Jill Reed who is putting together a tea party menu. Yes. Now, we've already made two finger sandwiches. Uh, we made our, our chicken curry, and we made our, our egg, cucumber, and mint. Yes. On to our third. On to our third. This is a roast beef. Okay. With creme fraiche and arugula and a little horseradish. So we've got our horseradish here, the creme fraiche. The arugula, we're going to chop that up roughly. And then the roast beef, because I don't need a whole roast beef for this. I right. just go to the deli counter at the store and I have them cut me a couple slices. Nice big thick nice slices. Nice slices. And, and you just cube it up. Yeah, cube it up and it's brilliant. easy peasy and you don't. Perfect. If you have leftover roast beef, this is a great yeah, way to right, use it. Right, exactly, but exactly. <laughs> if you don't happen to have that, this, this works well. Oh, that's well. a great idea. So we're going to put in our Horseradish. And that's a nice, that's some pure horseradish. I right like there. a lot. <laughs> I do too. So you, you know, don't tread lightly for me. That's for and sure. And then if you want to add the creme fraiche while I chop I up some of this arugula. Or as the English call it, rocket. Rocket. Which is, I don't know where that comes from, but that's what they call arugula, rocket. I like this. It adds, in addition to the horseradish, it adds another little peppery, spicy peppery, right. flavor. Yeah, no, and, and color. Oh, yeah. And you're getting the color, too. Beautiful. And I love that we're using creme fraiche here. I like creme fraiche. And I should point out that we are plating today on your grandmother's... Yes. China. That is awesome. Yeah, it's kind of special. Sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. That's awesome. That's awesome. You're allowed to do that. That's great. That's great. Yeah, it's that. I mean, you know, fitting tribute, right? Yeah. I love to be able to use the things that she left me, and I do try to use them when family comes over or when you know we're having something going on. Because I, you know, if it sits in a cabinet and never gets seen, right? And you know, listen. I mean, what a fitting, what a fitting tribute. And now it sheds a little light on why you brought this. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's great. That's she great. she would even when my sister and I were kids, she would let us use the good china and the good silver and. If it, you know, it was Christmas. And you've got to stop because you're going to make me cry <laughs> if you keep going. No, that's great. Let's get back to the, the roast beef yes. sandwich, all right? We'll do this. <laughs> all right. So we have a little salt and pepper in there with our creme fraiche, our arugula, horseradish, and right. then just the cubed up roast beef. And Beautiful. Look at that. Mixes it up. I do like the color it, in you there. You know what I like about this, too? And it, it's so funny because I think... All right, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a little leap here and, and, and risk not sounding sexist, but I think that for the most part, you think tea party, you think of it being sort of a something that it's females, right? right? Okay. It's frilly and it, it's right. and, fancy. And I got to tell you, that's a pretty manly sandwich right there. <laughs> I mean, you've got roast beef, you've got you know nice rare roast beef, and you've got 
a good amount of like strong horseradish in oh, it. Oh yeah. So Roast beef and horseradish is just it's a classic. That's yeah. a really nice way to kinda, you know, Hey, bring the gents in, right? <laughs> you can get some good roast beef sandwiches here. All right, so we're going, is this sourdough? This is. Normally, I would serve this on a potato bread, meat and potatoes. But oh, well. since they didn't have the potato bread, I'm going for that's a little sourdough, which is not a bad option. I, I love that. I, that's very well thought out. I, meat and potatoes. Look at you with the uh, complete concept here. And again, buttering the bread a little bit to so keep the You need to create moisture. that barrier. Yeah, we got a little bit more moisture in this one too, it seems. A little bit more creme fraiche. And that's gonna. <laughs> that's all right. We're that's okay. That's now. right. Who cares? Who cares? Get this out of the way. And then again, it's just add your filling and cut the crust off and make it. Mm. That, that aesthetically pleasing. See, and now I'm going a little heavy on the roast beef. <laughs> <laughs> well, I told you to make me a manly sandwich. It's a little too I mean, manly there. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think that you did good. I love this combination together, and I just kind of, I used to make it with the arugula, whole leaves of arugula on there, and then one day I thought, I'm just going to chop it up and mix it all together. Right. Just get it all in one bowl. And now, see, I just went heavy, too. Yeah, look at me. But no, it, I, I like it, and I like, you know, that creme fraiche because the combination of, like, the horseradish and the roast beef almost sort of begs for some dairy, you know, and I think that you could, you know, in, in some sandwiches you would see things like maybe like an English cheddar or something, but that right. wouldn't be nice with the tea. I don't see that, you know. I see this creme fraiche as being the... Yeah, the cheese would make it a little heavy, right. I think, for and, tea. And I also like that you chop the arugula into there. May I borrow a bread knife, please? Yes. Um, I like that you put the, the uh, arugula into the salad itself and oh. incorporated it, and it thinks it's just going to make it sort of easy to eat. You're not going to pull out... Right, a big, big whole leaf of arugula hanging out of your mouth as you're trying to look fancy and drink tea. Okay. And you can see the color of the arugula throughout, which I think yes. is, is a nice okay. aesthetic. Well, let's see. I don't want to rip this one. Here we go. So the... There we go. Excellent. So our, our, the sandwich portion of our meal is complete. Yes. And now, on to the canopies. Let's do those. There you go. All These right. These are pretty easy. All right. Let me get, get another bowl here for us. Here, we can use this one. We're good here. Uh, oh, you got it? I'm good. Okay. Can you pass that my way, please? And I want yes. to do the same. All right, our canopies. And we'll get that out of the way. So the canapes, kind of, this is a total cheat. Okay, we're all right you, with that. You can make your own lemon loaf, or if you prefer banana loaf, whatever, whatever you like. Um, I like a nice, the lemon and berries goes nicely together, so that's what I do. Okay. And then, I'm going to use this knife. It doesn't have meat on it. just going to make some kind of healthy slices of All this. Right. I think I know where you're going with this, and I All like right. it. Just going to cut out circles. Just going to punch out circles, and then these become our little Beautiful. vessel. They're adorable. For everything else. Look at that. And it's just a little bite size. I, I, at the end of tea, you want something a little okay. sweet. You can save these and kind of toast them up and crumble them over ice cream, oh, too. Oh, that's yeah, that's not getting oh. thrown no, away. No, I don't throw that away. I find another use for the lemon loaf, for sure. Okay. All right. What do you have next? So, this is the cream cheese. It, it's already whipped cream cheese, so it's going to be oh, beautiful. fairly soft. Okay. Um, what you need? I'm going to grab a bowl here because I forgot my bowl. No worries. <laughs> It'll worries. be easier to mix it in a bowl. Okay. Oh, because we're going to mix it with the we're honey? We're going to mix in the honey and the chopped pecans. That's going to give a nice little crunchy texture. I'm all about texture. Okay. So we want our cream cheese. That's probably good. What the heck? Let's do a little more. Beautiful. And then the pecans. Oh, I love it. All that in there. And then just a little honey. The cake, the, the lemon loaf is sweet enough, so we don't want to overdo it. Right. But But this is the sweet portion of, this our, is the sweet portion. of our meal. And honey... You know, it's a little different sweetness than sugar, sugar, so you're not really overwhelmed with, with it. Too. It's going right. to temper that nicely. Exactly. 
this mixes up pretty quick because that is already whipped cream cheese. Beautiful. Yeah, that, that's, that, that'd be nice just to sort of keep around and put on anything, right? Yes. A piece of toast or something. <laughs> oh, this is, well, this is a nice leftover idea that you just had. I do that, and oh. you can slice some strawberries and put it on there. Oh, yeah. If you have extra raspberries, you don't have to have the lemon loaf. No. It works just fine on regular bread. All right, and show us how we assemble these. So this is going to be, I want a little dollop of cream cheese mix. Like that. You want to try to keep it bite size ish Okay. And then find a nice Here. juicy raspberry. If you have some pretty little mint leaves like these. Ah, uh, look at that. You can do like so, or you can... Gorgeous. You know, chiffonade the mint into little ribbons. And I think I like this. This is a nice it's, it's little. It's very pretty. You know, you know, as long as you have the smaller leaves like that, I yeah. think it's great. Yeah. Listen, why don't we make a bunch more? Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> or, we can eat a bunch more? <laughs> yeah, or enough to like, you know, like right. satisfy us. And uh, we'll do that during the break, get cleaned up, and have a little English tea on the other awesome. side. Sounds good to me. All right. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Alexa, how do you tell if asparagus is still good? If it's not moldy or slimy, it's okay to eat. Enable the new skill from Save the Food on your Amazon Alexa and help fight food waste. Welcome back. It's time for a tea party. We've got the food. We've got the tea. We've got the dessert. Let's do it. All right. All you right. Start with the egg. I would like to do that. Yes, that seems like a logical first place here. Mm. Mm hmm. Mint, egg, cucumber, creme fraiche, perfect. Right, simple. Love it, love so it. So this is the curry chicken with pistachio. Okay, and I'm going to take a bite of that pistachio the, side yeah, the, there. The good side. Mm. Really nice, not overly curried. Mm -hmm. Proper, you know. Really, really good. Wow. Thank you. Wow. That's a real, and the sweetness, <coughs> that also works really right. nicely with that. And then this is the roast beef with horseradish and creme fraiche. And I am looking forward to this. A little arugula in there for mm -hmm. color, spice. Mmm. Definitely brought something to the party here. Right. Okay. So then we have our dessert. Shall we? Yes. All right. It's Ladies a first. Lemon canapé. Okay. So lemon loaf. The nutty cream cheese and then a little raspberry. I'm just gonna go for it. One bite wonder. <laughs> that is absolutely delicious. It would not be Cheers. a tea party without our tea. Exactly. Pinky's out. Please let's do this again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really goes to show you we are cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community. On behalf of myself, Jill, Pip Pip Cheerio. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time, Community Cooking. If you'd like a copy of the recipe seen on this show, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to the Office of Cable and Community Relations. That's 3350 Civic Center Drive, Suite 200, in Torrance, California, 90503. Be sure to note the show number displayed on the screen. And don't forget, you can find all the fresh ingredients used on today's show at the Farmer's Market. Visit the one here in Torrance at Wilson Park. That's located at 2200 Crenshaw Boulevard. They're open every Tuesday and Saturday from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m., rain or shine. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, email us at communitycooking at torrentca.gov and check us out online at youtube.com slash torrentcitycable and like us on Facebook at Community Cooking TV.